we are now going to introduce couple of definitions. Suppose some alpha is given to you which is between 0 1. Now our test with power function b of theta, we are going to be call it as a size alpha test. If its maximum value over my null hypothesis is alpha. You understand what I am talking about? So what is this? When I look beta of theta over theta which is coming from null hypothesis, this is going to give me what? Type 1 error. So basically when I say a test is size alpha test, that means it's type 1 error, maximum value of its type 1 error is alpha. Okay. A little generalization of this definition is, suppose I have alpha between 0 and 1 and I have a test with power function beta of theta, I am going to call this test level alpha test if its maximum value over my null hypothesis is less than or equals to alpha. Okay, basically I am saying that type 1 error has to be less than or equals to alpha. Now, if I give you a test which is level alpha, is it also size alpha? Yes. We do not know, right? Like when I say level alpha, it is less than or equals to alpha. It is not exactly alpha. But on the other way, if I give a test which is size alpha, will it be level alpha test? That is true, right? Okay, now here, because these are related to the type 1 errors, by fixing my alpha, I am only controlling type 1 errors in these definitions for the test. Okay, uh, there is nothing I am talking about type 2 errors in these definitions. Is the definition of size and level of a test clear to you? Now I am going to talk about one more test. We talked about unbiased estimators. Now let us talk about unbiased tests. We are going to say that a test with power function b of theta is unbiased. Okay, so to understand this, let us talk about a picture. So I am taking simple real line. Let us say this is my theta naught this when theta is less than or equals to this theta naught, let us say this is my null hypothesis and when theta is greater than this theta naught, let us call this a alternate hypothesis. Choose theta prime from this region and choose theta double prime from this region or alternate way I am messed I, I swapped it choose theta prime coming from an alternate hypothesis and choose theta double prime coming from null hypothesis now if you have a test okay let us say if sample is coming from this theta prime that is alternate hypothesis, and it is or another possibility that sample is coming from this null hypothesis. Under which parameter that your rejection probability should be higher? The rejection probability should be higher when it is coming from alternate hypothesis, right? You do not want to accept it belonging to the null hypothesis. When the underlying parameter is already theta prime, it should be higher. 
On the contrary, like if it is parameter from theta prime, it being rejection should be smaller. So that is exactly the unbiased net property is trying to capture. It is saying that the probability of rejection of a sample that is coming from alternate hypothesis should be larger than probability of rejection of a sample that is coming from null hypothesis. If that, that, that is the case, that means basically what it is saying is your test is such that it has more tendencies, tendency to reject samples which are generated from the alternate hypothesis parameters. That is what you, you expect your test to be. If that is the case, then you are going to call it as unbiased test. Okay? Okay, so let us see whether the test we found for the Gaussian samples was unbiased or not. So, in the Gaussian samples which are coming from some parameter theta sigma square where as usual we assume theta is known and theta square is not known. For that your power function was this, the LRT we constructed right. So, the LRT, the LRT we constructed has a rejection region like this, right? What was that? X bar minus theta divided by sigma by square root n being large, that was theta naught being greater than or equals to 0. We had something like that which get translated to this power function which we calculated in the couple of slides back. So, this is the power function we have. Now, let us try to see that if I have a power function, I should be able to say whether it is a biased or unbiased test. Can you check whether this is an unbiased test? Apply this definition and check. Why is that? Yeah, 1 minus 1 minus phi. Uh -huh. No, I am I have to tell this in terms of my beta function, right? Power function. For my test here, I have given you my power function, and uh, using this, I need to tell whether it is a biased or unbiased test. So, the definition only requires you to use a power function, nothing else. See if theta increases here, beta theta is increasing. How does that conclude this is happening? This is not about x, this is about the thetas parameters. Yeah, why is that? See now I have to check. So, I will take two values. Let us say I take theta prime double prime from here which is a smaller than theta, theta naught and I take theta prime which is larger than theta. Since this b, now I know that theta prime is less than or equals to theta naught and this is less than or equals to theta prime, right? Now, if beta is monotonically increasing, it must be the case that beta of theta double prime must be less than or equals to beta of theta less than or equals to beta of, agree? If beta is monotonically increasing, that is it, we proved. We have shown that beta of theta prime is greater than or equals to beta of theta double prime. So, the test we had for the Gaussian samples based on our likelihood ratio test is indeed unbiased. And notice that this is, this holds only for some c and n value or any c and n value. It holds for any c and n value, right? To all we want is monotonicity irrespective of what is c and n this beta of theta function is monotonous. Okay? Now, this leads us to further look for the most powerful tests.
okay so again if you have to draw analogy with your uh, estimators how did we do estimators first we started we are look for estimator which were unbiased and among the unbiased estimator what we were trying to look the one with minimum variance we wanted someone with a minimum variance maybe that kind of analogy can also be here right like of course we want want a test which is unbiased but now the variance analogy is now captured through our type 2 error and type 1 error now okay now let's say we have a class of level alpha tests i have many tests which are like level alpha their type 1 error is alpha nothing more than that so we know that for level alpha type 1 error is at most theta okay now first of all if you have a level alpha test i know that my type 1 error is not going to be more than alpha but now among the level alpha tests i want to consider our test to be good which has the smallest type 2 error among them okay so that leads to the definition of uniformly most powerful class which we define as follows suppose we have a test like this is we have a test where theta is hype I mean we have this as usual null hypothesis and we have this alternate hypothesis and let's say we have some c is a class of tests for this hypothesis and we are going to call this c to be uniformly most powerful if you take any beta that is you take any test in C now every test we are associating them with their power function right you take any test with power function beta of prime of theta in C if okay we say okay wait a minute I have to rephrase this now we say some beta of theta belonging to C is uniformly more powerful test in C provided if you take this beta of c it should be equals to beta prime of theta for theta belongs to theta c complement what does that mean this has a higher probability of rejection than any test in that class when my theta is coming from my alternate hypothesis but it is saying that the whenever theta is coming from alternate hypothesis my probability of rejection is the highest in my class that guy is called uniformly most powerful test in that class okay so if you have a bunch of tests and you give it a sample which is generated from an alternate hypothesis if some tester rejects it it did a good job because it is coming from your alternate hypothesis but that UMP if this guy has rejected that is also likely very likely that it will also reject 
okay because the probability of its rejection is higher than probability of rejecting reject uh, probability of rejection of this guy the test we have selected okay in that way that is good in my set and that is why i'm going to call it as most uniformly most powerful not only most powerful but it is uniformly most powerful test now the question comes fine this is all good i like unbiased tests i like powerful tests i like sorry i like uniformly most powerful test by the way did we decide yeah we just decided discuss unbiased test then we talked about most powerful test and now is there a, in a way what we are looking is a good test in my class of test that is my most powerful test or rather like uniformly most powerful test now the question is uh, such a test always exist okay see so is it possible that you can come up with multiple tests level level alpha tests okay just let's briefly discuss suppose let's say i have this i have this right z greater than or equals to c plus what was that theta minus theta sigma by square root n this was my i can choose from c and n and i will get some test let's say if you fix everything let's now focus on c itself let's take c equals to 0 and whatever this guy gives me wrote let's call for c equals to 0 let's call this as some alpha itself let's call alpha for c equals to 0 now if i going to increase this c now i will make c greater than 0 what will happen to this probability it's going to be less than alpha now right so what i can do is by just choosing different different c i can come up with so many tests right like if my c's are only allowed to be positive numbers i know by setting zero i am going to get some value type 1 error let's call let's call this alpha and by choosing any c greater than zero they are going to be all the tests are going to be less than alpha so all of them are going to be can i call them they are belonging to a class with size level alpha by choosing different different c now i can construct a set class of tests which are level alpha tests now what i am looking is among them which is the one which is most powerful right now this neyman pearson's lemma is something which tells us when one can expect a most powerful test to exist exists and how does it look like okay so here is a simple version of the neyman pearson lemma which only considers two simple hypotheses it only tries to distinguish whether my parameter theta 0 or theta 1 when it is theta 0 it is my null hypothesis when theta 1 is alternate hypothesis i just need to distinguish if your hypothesis test is there and suppose let's say your rejection region is such that whenever your sample x has a higher probability under theta 1 than under parameter theta 0 i am talking probability but it is also density when it is a continuous case then i am going to reject otherwise i am going to accept but there is some constant here which is 
that is a some constant. So, you have defined your rejection region now in terms of the PDF or the probability mass, mass function whichever is applicable. And now let us under this rejection region, I am going to define my alpha to be probability that my sample is going to be rejected under my parameter theta 0. That is, it is my type 1 error. Okay? So, type 1 error I am going to call it as alpha. Now, it says that any test which is with the above rejection region is going to be a uniformly most powerful test. If you are going to have a rejection region like this, then that is going to be uniformly more sorry most powerful test. It is uh, not just that it is uniformly most powerful level alpha test. Okay? So, this is like a necessary condition. On the other hand, it says that if you have a uniformly most powerful level alpha tests or like it is saying that every uniformly most powerful level alpha test, what if you can come up with one, it has to be like look like this, its structure has to look like this. Okay? So, it is basically saying how to construct an uniformly most powerful test and it is also telling you if somebody gives you a uniformly most powerful test, how it will look like. Okay? And uh, this is why, this is a simple setting, but it is giving you a very nice characterization. Okay? So, here this constant factor is missing, but if you can come up with a constant factor and have a rejection region like this, then it is going to be uniform most powerful test. But under this uh, simple case that you have just two parameters to test in your hypothesis testing setup. Okay. So, any questions on this? or whatever we discussed so far about this most powerful test and this unbiased test. So, do you think anything else should be considered when we are looking into this test? Okay, these are properties, right? Unbiasedness is a property, uniform most powerful being a property. Is there any other property that you think one should consider when we are defining such tests? Okay, now just to briefly discuss the next topic that we will cover in the next lecture called interval estimations. Okay, now let us say you have these samples. Let us say they are all coming from Gaussian distribution with parameter theta and sigma square. So, what is the best estimator for theta? So, the best estimator for theta is sample mu. Now, what is the probability that theta hat is equals to theta? That the your estimated value is exactly equals to the true value, what is the probability? What is this? Is it 0? Why is that? So, what is the distribution of theta hat? Normal with what parameters? Mu and sigma square by n, right? So, theta hat itself is a random variable which is continuous and continuous random variable taking any particular value, we know that is going to be 0. So, when you estimate your value theta to be theta hat, the confidence that you have that is going to be the exact value is how much? you have zero confidence in this because theta hat being exactly equals to 
being theta is 0. On the other hand, if I say theta hat or I will just say theta now belongs to theta hat let us say minus epsilon to theta hat plus epsilon. Can we calculate this probability? How? Huh? Okay, let us compute this. So, what we are basically asking is probability that theta is going to be less than or equals to theta hat plus epsilon and theta hat minus epsilon, right? And uh, and I know that this probability is simply summation of xi by n minus epsilon theta. This is summation of xi by n plus epsilon. Or maybe I should have done something better instead of this. I will get theta hat in between. So, this is fine, right? I am basically asking theta to be between theta hat minus epsilon and upper bounded by uh, theta hat. Now, I want to write. So, what is the random quantity in this? Theta hat is the random quantity. Is theta is, ran is random quantity? No, that is a fixed parameter, right? So, now let us try to write. So, now I know that this theta hat from this quantity is going to be less than theta by epsilon and, uh, and this is going to be theta plus epsilon. I can do this, okay? And uh, let us do this probability that theta minus epsilon what is this and I can further take this theta hat is summation xi by n or maybe before this I will do one more step probability that minus epsilon greater than or equals to theta hat minus theta less than or equals to epsilon. For time being, let us take only n equals to 4 samples okay, and sigma square to be 1 unit variance. Okay. Now, minus epsilon x bar is basically x i i 1 to 4 divided by 4 minus theta minus epsilon. Okay. Now, what I will do is probability that minus epsilon that is uh, okay, this is simply x bar minus theta divided by I am going to do 1 by 4 minus epsilon 1 by 4 and plus 1 by square root of 4. So, I have basically this quantity I have written as x bar and everything else I have divided by square root of 1 by 4. So, what is square root of 1 by 4 here? It is equivalent to sigma square by or like sigma by square root n right which I want. Now, because of that what I can say about this that is now I can write it as probability that minus epsilon this is going to be 2 epsilon this is now z this is going to be plus 2 epsilon right. Now, z is a 
standard normal, I should be able to compute this probability. So this is basically minus 2 epsilon, 2 epsilon, 1 upon 2 pi exponential. This is a zero thing, right? Minus x square by 2. Now, will this be positive quantity? This is going to be positive quantity, right? So, this is not going to be zero like this. Earlier, when you are asking exactly that to be theta, you are zero. But now, instead of that, you are asking whether it will be in this interval, you are going to get some positive quantity. And now, we are going to study that. Instead of asking exactly this value, we want your estimation to be lie in some interval and see that with that our confidence will be any better. Here our confidence was 0, but here we see that already our confidence can be positive. Okay, So, let us stop here. We will continue this uh, interval estimations or confidence interval settings in the next class.